Hi, today I want to uh, share with you a game uh, from 1992. This game is between a player named Roland Ackerman with the white pieces and with the black pieces, uh, Daniel King. The game started out E4, C5 from Daniel, D4, Smith Mora Gambit. C takes D4, C3, D takes C3, and Knight takes C3. Now, in exchange uh, for the pawn, uh, White gains time and uh, subsequently hopes to gain enough peace activity whereby uh, he can transform the advantage uh, in development and space into a material advantage but um, practice of thousands and thousands of chess games have shown that although the Smith Mora uh, Gambit uh, is enterprising and um, uh, simple to play and white achieves excellent uh, peace play uh, the pawn deficit is uh, too much uh, for white to overcome in most instances and this is why you do not see the uh, Smith Mora Gambit uh, at top levels but at amateur levels uh, is very uh, popular because there's a, uh, several traps uh, that white uh, can play and that black has to be on the lookout for game continued knight c6 knight f3 D6 from Daniel. Now, um, <clears throat> the idea behind D6, of course, is to prevent E5. It pre it prepares to move uh, Knight F6 at some point, but first E5 must uh, be halted. Also, it prepares to move Bishop uh, G4 if allowed. But again. Uh, white has easy development and peace play in this line and black must be very careful because it's easy to um, fall into one of uh, several traps that white may set during the open for example if bishop g4 right away there's the Tactic, bishop takes f7, king takes f7, and knight g5. And after king e8, simply queen takes g4. So these are the type of uh, traps that uh, often <clears throat> capture lower rated, rated players and uh, you know, create a fear of this opening. And turns players away from playing the Sicilian with the black pieces. So this is the idea behind bishop c4. Remember I told you that black wants to be able to play this bishop out to g4. But you have to be careful. So now a6 is played. Now a6 <clears throat> prevents... In certain variations, the knight coming to b5. So, for example, if knight f6 here, then let us say, let's just make a move for white, e5, and let's say d takes e5. Then queen d8, king d8, and then we can see this pawn is hanging already, knight g5, and white is already uh, in trouble. Excuse me, not white. Black is already in trouble. There's really no acceptable way to deal with this threat to f7. If knight a5, then bishop takes f7. 
Now concerning the idea of B5, let us just say um, after, let's say D takes E5, and let's just create another random aspect, Queen E2. <clears throat> And let's say queen c7, castles, bishop g4, and knight b5 can be quite annoying for black. And those are just two sample lines. But basically, black, uh, black strategy is to basically fortify his position against these um, common uh, white attacks. Black has received a pawn in the opening and you know there's a price that comes with that and the price that uh, black has to pay for taking the pawn in the opening is that white has uh, increased um, you know activity and lead uh, in his lead in development and has more space and again white wants to take those two um, factors space right and the uh, lead in development and overwhelm black in the position and in the process gain back the material invested and then some so what black is doing is basically uh, fortifying his position for the for the onslaught and kind of one by one um preventing uh any future tactical play by white you know setting up a very strong um fortification right in his position and then after doing that gradually catching up in development and then asking white the question what are you going to do uh now i'm just up a pawn and that's how most of these games, um, especially at the higher levels, you really don't see that high levels, but say 2400. And so usually wind up uh, ending up either it's going to be a tactical uh, melee and uh, or it's going to be one of those situations where black just neutralizes a white attack and then just goes up into a better ending. So a6 is one of those important moves here. Preventing. Uh, b5 knight excuse me a piece from coming to b5 also it prepares b5 in certain lines down the road so castles notice the lead in development from white but it's not as it's not as critical here because uh the position is relatively closed this is called the semi-closed position the reason why it's not completely closed is because um there's two pawns missing uh, from white side so the D and C files are are partially opened but this is a semi-closed position and although white has a great uh, lead in development it's very hard to exploit it this is not like a Danish gambit or something like that where black has played E5 and uh, you know the position takes on an open nature so this is one of the factors that, uh, you know, are in uh, Black's favor. That the position is closed so he can take his time and play moves like A6 and just slowly uh, catch up in development. The onus is on White who is down uh, material. And one thing I want to say about material is material is more or less a permanent advantage in chess. In other words, if... Uh, you know, the players keep making moves and exchanging material, uh, you know, the same, you know, value in units, then um, black will just end up, you know, up a pawn and, you know, in the, uh, in the end game. Whereas the advantage that white possess, possesses, excuse me, which is a lead in development and space, these are more or less temporary advantages. And if white does not um 
utilize them quickly, then they will just dissipate. And then he will just be down upon. So right now, the advantage of space and in development compensate for the pawn deficit. But there's like a burning fuse on advantage in space. Excuse me, advantage in space and um, lead in development. Because black can catch up in both areas if white is not um, energetic in its play. Let's keep going. So knight of six, queen e2. Now, there's many games where bishop g5 has uh, been tried, but there's a famous game in this line uh, in the Smith Moore Gambit between um, Ken Evans with the white pieces, who was a senior master at the time, versus Grandmaster Larry Evans. And I suggest that you check that out. That's one of the uh, most famous games in this uh, line, especially if you're studying from the black side. And it's one of the reasons why you don't see bishop g5 uh, played in this line uh, much anymore so queen e2 <clears throat> continuing with development and looking at the moves like e5 now the natural move here Danny King play is bishop g4 getting the piece out right and pinning the knight and remember in the Sicilian the play is primarily for black revolving around these dark squares e5 and d4 and the bishop uh, fits right in with that plan. The bishop placement on g4, pinning the knight. Rook d1. And now, white has to be careful. Excuse me, black has to be careful again. Because now, the rook and queen are opposed on the d file. And somewhere down the line, white would love to play a move like e5. Where, where when the queen is on d8. To totally disrupt uh, black's coordination. E6. <clears throat> blunting the bishop here. And of course. Um, due to the pin. Black does not have to fear E5 at this moment. Speaking of traps. Here's another uh, trap latent in the position. So, for example, if black tries to pile on the pressure on f3 with knight e5, right, threatening to double up these pawns, then white can simply play knight takes e5 and say bishop takes e2 and bishop takes f7 is mate. And this is a trap I actually fell into uh, one time. Uh, doing a, a blitz game when I was first investigating this um, this opening. I never forgot it after that. <laughs> so I'm passing it on to you. So if you're black here, you have to be very patient. Don't try to uh, resolve the problems quickly. Okay, so E6 is played. And Ackerman played uh, bishop uh, to f4, piling on the pressure on this d pawn. This d pawn, and uh, this is one of the major themes here. Of course, attacking for white that is attacking down the d and c files, right? That are semi-open and one is uh, fully open, and also attacking this pawn. Because it is a liability in the black um, structure. Now, if black loses the pawn, black is definitely worse because, you know, he's giving up uh, lead in development and uh, space for the pawn. So if black just drops the pawn, then he just stands worse. He'd probably be uh, close to losing. So it is imperative for white to, excuse me, for black to protect uh, what, you know, his... Um, his pawn. Now, black has to find the balance between, but you know, between um, being materialistic and you know uh, allowing his position to deteriorate. And of course, he can't just give give back the pawn because white has too many other advantages. So he has to find a way to hold the hold the pawn. But of course, um, you know, 
basically hold his position also. <clears throat> now, one of the plans here, and Danny King, uh, you know, employs it here, is he deals with the problem of his queen, first of all, because the queen is not really going to do too well on the D file or C file. I know that... Uh, get out of this for a second I know that Queen C7 is a uh, one of the main kind of ideas in the Sicilian but here it's, it's not too good because again this rook is about to come here and it's hard to find a good place for the Queen here's a typical idea that you can adapt if you're playing against this it's Queen B8 now you've moved off the Queen off the D and C files but at least uh, you know, you're not going to be attacked by these rooks. And also, you have to be careful, you know, of this threat right here. So, it was imperative for the the uh, queen to get out of there. So, queen b8. Now, before I show you that plan, this plan with queen b8, which is perfectly playable, I'm going to show you the, you know, the correct move here. And... It's based on uh, tactical continuation. So queen b8 is more of the positional, uh, you know, approach to it. But here, you know, tactics are king. And notice that this bishop here is hanging on f4, not, nothing protecting it. So at this point, and of course he wants to play this move e5. So at this point, a good simple move is knight h5. This challenge is... Uh, <clears throat> Black's, excuse me, White's entire idea of putting pressure on this pawn. Okay, by challenging this piece. If Bishop takes, excuse me, Bishop G3, then simply Knight takes G3. Just getting Bishop pair. Again, this helps Black getting rid of White's Bishop pair, which is an advantage. And then h5. Why h5 here? Because your rook is on the h file. Your idea is simply to play h4 and open up the um, h file. And again, if you're not familiar with this idea, I suggest that you uh, find the game in the database or on chessgames.com. Um, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Smith versus um, Larry Evans. So that's the bishop g3 idea. If bishop g5 attacking the queen, well, that's a blunder. You just snatch that up. Queen takes g5. Knight takes g5. Bishop takes e2. Bishop takes e2. And knight f4. Again, pieces have been exchanged. And black is closer to his better end game. Last move is bishop e3, but then this takes the bishop off the post that he was originally assigned to, you know, and so the whole idea is basically refuted of putting pressure on this pawn and planning to play e5. So if you play bishop f4 and then go right back to e3, that means you're admitting that you were wrong. And of course, at this point, now, with this pawn at e6, Right, blocking any tactics against f7. Now knight e5 is perfectly playable. So, for example, bishop b3, b5, bishop d4. Again, just a sample line, and black is just winning. You can see how quick the ties are turned. So, knight h5 is definitely. The, the move right in that this particular position but now I'm going to show you the plan that is a typical plan here and that's why I chose this game because um, you might not remember a specific move like knight h5 you know because it's specific to this position but the plan you can use the plan you know with modifications of course uh, in your own games so queen b8 so queen b8 moving the queen out of danger h3 was played and of course 
you want to exchange that. Bishop takes f3. Queen takes f3. Bishop e7. Rook ac1. And castle. Bishop moves back to b3. Because the idea behind queen b8, besides just protecting this, is to slide this rook over. Rook c8. And then play b5. Queen e3. There it is, b5. And then at this point, um, white has basically, um, you know, allowed black to catch up in development. And now black is taking space on the queen side. So now we can basically say that he's just down a pawn. Again, this pawn is weak, but it's protected. Bishop g5, white gives up the assault against that pawn. Knight a5. And of course, you can imagine a knight, nice outpost for this knight here. f4. H6, Bishop H4, and now again, you always have to be alert for hanging, hanging pieces. And uh, Danny King, of course, was 2505 at the time. He jumps right on it, the opportunity to exchange pieces because you're up, you're up material. So you just simply diminish the attacking potential of the opponent. The opponent goes wild and basically, you know, gets desperate. And this happens a lot. Uh, you know, you know, players start realizing that their, you know, their um, chance for attack is diminishing, and then they just start uh, creating all kind of weaknesses in the position. So H takes G five. So then F five. And, you know, we can say that um, Black is just winning here. Danny uh, snatches off the uh, bishop. Again, exchanging more pieces. He played g4 with the idea of bringing this bishop back into the back here, back into the game. He could have easily just played e takes f5 here there wouldn't have been any problem with that e, for instance e takes f5 e takes f5 rook e8 hitting the queen but again this bishop is kind of off sides so that's that was why he played g4 you know possibly worried about the bishop getting trapped so g4 F takes, F takes, and now Queen F4, and of course here was his plan from um, several moves ago, getting the bishop back into it, Queen takes G4, Rook E8 protecting the pawn, again not, he didn't have to do that, but he could play just Queen A7 check, E5, another desperate move, Bishop takes E5, Knight e4, check, king h1, queen e3, and here comes the finale. Rook c7, putting the uh, rook on the seventh rank, so it looks like it's doing something, but this bishop hits here and has everything under control. And actually now, this uh, creates a tactical liability. Daddy king plays queen h6, this just simply... Um, you know, overprotects on g7. And now after king g1, d5 with the double attack, attacking the knight here and the rook here. And uh, black resigned. 